Hello, everyone, and welcome to USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorial number 19. We have a great tutorial that's really relevant for the USMLE exam. So let's go ahead and get started with this high yield question. This is a 41 year old female who comes to the ED presenting with acute left leg pain, swelling, and erythema. On physical exam, she is in no distress. Her vital signs are normal. She has no past surgical history, but has a history of gout for which she takes NSAIDs. She also takes oral contraceptives regularly. Her D dimer is elevated. What is the next best step in management? Should we discharge her home after IV fluids, order a CTA of the chest, ultrasound her left leg, or discontinue the NSAIDs? What's the next best step in management? I promise we'll come back to this high yield question at the end of this very short tutorial. So I want to talk today about DVT and PE or pulmonary embolism. This is a very high yield topic on the US Emily. You're bound to get at least one, if not a couple questions on this topic. So let's talk first about what a DVT is. A DVT or a deep venous thrombosis is a blood clot within a vein. Typically, the deep veins of the proximal lower extremity, so the femoral, the iliac, or the popliteal vein, those are the most common places to get a clot. The Verkau triad, as I'm sure all of you guys know, predisposes to you know, DVTs and even PE. So things like the she mnemonic, right? So venous stasis that occurs from a post-operative state or, you know, being on an airplane for a very long time, kind of sitting still, hypercoagulability states such as, you know, factor five latent deficiency, uh, being on oral contraceptives or being pregnant, that's a hypercoagulable state, and endothelial damage. These are the three major risk factors for actually both DVT and PE. A DVT typically presents with acute swelling, redness, and pain in an extremity typical and similar to the case index that I just described in my vignette that we just saw, right? So that's how a DVT uh, typically presents. It's diagnosed with ultrasound, right? So ultrasound is the major modality and I'm gonna show you images of what we look for and how we diagnose a DVT on ultrasound. The D-dimer study, although it's very sensitive for DVT and even PE, it's not very specific, right? So that's an important thing to keep in mind. And we often treat this with anticoagulation, typically with low molecular weight heparin. Uh, that's typically how we treat DVTs. And this is what it looks like on ultrasound. So on the left side of the image, we have a normal appearance, a normal ultrasound exam of, of certain veins. This happens to be the right mid femoral vein. And on the right side, we have an example of what a DVT uh, would look like in the popliteal vein. So I want to. So this is a grayscale ultrasound image, and these dark black areas are the vessels. They're they're ovoid because we're in trance, where where the probe is trans to the patient. This here is a sub Q fat here. This is some of the muscular layer, and we have the vessels here, right? The vein tends to be bigger than the artery, and I've labeled this. This is the femoral vein. This is the femoral artery. Normally, when you compress, if you add, if you you add pressure to the transducer when you're imaging in real time, the vein is compressible, the artery is not. So that's why this image is done without compression. This image on the right is done with compression. Notice that the artery does not compress, but in this case, this black ovoid structure completely compresses and we don't see it. That's normal. That's what we would normally expect, right? But if you contrast that to the DVT, in this case of the popliteal vein, again, we have the artery and the vein, right? They're nice and black. Uh, structures here. And when we, this is done without compression on the left, and this is done with compression on the right. The artery again does not compress, and the vein also does not compress. So that's indicative of a DVT. When you add pressure or you, you know, put pressure on the transducer and the vein does not compress, that's diagnostic of a DVT. You know, non compressibility of the vein on an ultrasound exam is diagnostic of a DVT. Notice on the normal image, the vein will go away with compression. With a DVT, the vein will not go away with compression. Beautiful example of what a DVT looks like on ultrasound. Moving on to a PE or pulmonary embolism, this is obstruction of the pulmonary artery by a thrombus or any foreign material that sort of obstructs the lumen of the vessel. This typically presents with pleuritic chest pain. So what does that mean? That means, you know, pain that's exacerbated with inspiration or expiration, so kind of associated with breathing, sudden onset or shortness of breath, tachypnea, high uh, heart rate, tachycardia, high respiratory rate, and respiratory alkalosis, right? That's what you would expect on, uh, if you did labs, you would expect values to corroborate with respiratory alkalosis. The EKG can be normal. It can sometimes show sinus tachycardia. Uh, that's typical for, you know, what a PE would look like. A CTA, computed tomography and geography, a CTA, when we opacify the pulmonary arteries, is an imaging study of choice to diagnose a PE. 
Sometimes we can do a VQ, a ventilation perfusion study, which is a nuclear medicine study, but that's usually often done for problem solving reasons. Typically, you're looking for a VQ mismatch, meaning that there's normal uh, ventilation to the alveoli, but no perfusion to the alveoli. That mismatch of normal ventilation, but abnormal perfusion is how we diagnose PE with a VQ scan. And I'll show you what a CTA looks like for evaluating PE. Now, a major risk factor for PE is not only the first cal triad, but also having a DVT. Having a DVT is a high risk factor for getting a PE. You often treat this with anticoagulants as well. And if the patient can't tolerate an anticoagulant, we can obviously put a IVC filter into the vena cava to help prevent the propagation of a DVT into the pulmonary vasculature. So there are different types of emboli, right? The thrombus is probably the most common type, right? You could have air emboli that occurs, you know, from, you know, patients with like Quezon's disease or if you putting a, a patient gets a central line put in and that air can go into the, you know, pulmonary vasculature. Fat emboli typically with patients that have had liposuction or even, you know, uh, long bone fractures, right? Because remember the bone is made up of fat and blood, right? So that can result in, you know, a, a, you know, emboli to, that can become a PE tumor, bacteria, right? From endocarditis or even amniotic fluid in a patient that, you know, has just delivered a baby or is postpartum, uh, uterine trauma, all these things can result in, you know, PE. So I want to show what a PE looks like on CT. So on the left side of the image, we have normal CTA examination, right? So again, this is an axial image. So, you know, we are, uh, we're looking at this, this black area is the right lung. This black area is the left lung. This here is the mediastinum, right? This is a sternum. All these bright areas are the ribs here, right? This is a scapula here on the right, scapula here on the left. Remember by convention, the left side of the image is right. The right side of the image is left, right? So this is the right lung. This is the left lung. If we look at the mediastinum, this all these are vessels, these bright areas, because we've injected contrast into the patient. So this is the ascending aorta here, this ovoid structure here. Posteriorly here, this is going to be the descending thoracic aorta. And this area here is that this is the pulmonary artery, right? So this here is the main pulmonary artery. This here is going to be the right pulmonary artery. And we can't see the left pulmonary artery. This is actually the left pulmonary vein here. But, you know, notice here that, again, this is in the mediastinum. The pulmonary artery is to the left of the ascending aorta, right? So, you know, this is a nice example. What This is what it would normally look like. Notice that it's nice and bright and there's no filling defects within the vessels, right? If we take a look here on the abnormal image in this patient that has a PE, notice again, this is the ascending aorta. This is the main pulmonary artery where we have a field. This dark area is a filling defect because this is with a pulmonary emboli along where the main pulmonary artery is bifurcating into the right main pulmonary artery. And we also have a filling defect here along a branch of the left main pulmonary artery. So these Dark areas are filling defects, which are diagnostic of pulmonary emboli, right? So this is a nice example of what pulmonary embolism looks like on a CT. And this is what a normal pulmonary artery would look like on a CT. Now, I also want to talk about the concept of heart strain because a patients that have heart strain or right heart strain, they can be hemodynamically unstable with patients that have PE and it can be a major problem and they may have to be admitted to the hospital. They may have to go to the ICU because they have right heart strain. So normally this is a image of the heart, right? So this is, you know, this area here more anti this again, this is anterior, this is posterior. Anteriorly, we have the right atrium and right ventricle, right? This is the right atrium, right ventricle. This here is a left ventricle. You're seeing part of the left atrium right here. And this structure right here, this gray area is the interventricular septum, okay? You know, dividing the right ventricle and the left ventricle. So notice that it's, you know, nice and it kind of is convex anteriorly, right? It's kind of pointing you know, towards the right ventricle. In right heart strain, it becomes very flat, right? So you have, you know, flattening of the interventricular septum, and that's a sign, a CT sign of right heart strain. This can, you know, lead to hemodynamic instability and be a serious complication for a patient that has PE. And notice that in the right ventricle, right ventricle has enlarged, and it's result in flattening of the interventricular septum here in this patient that has right heart strain with a PE as well, okay? So a nice example of what that looks like on CT exam. So in terms of what you need to know for the US emily, so for DVT, it represents a clot in a deep vein, typically again, the femoral, you know, popliteal or iliac vein. Remember Verkal's triad, you know, she is a nice mnemonic for a risk factor, right? Venous stasis, hypercoagulability or endothelial damage. It's gonna present clinically like acute unilateral pain and swelling in a extremity. We of course diagnose this with ultrasound when you don't have compression of the vein in real-time exam, that's diagnostic of a DVT and we do anticoagulation to treat this. For a PE, this represents obstruction of the pulmonary artery. We talked about the different ways that the pulmonary artery can have obstruction. 
Risk factors for a PE are DVT or Burka's triad, the she mnemonic. Clinically, this is going to present with shortness of breath, pleuritic chest pain that's associated with breathing, hypoxemia, and respiratory alkalosis. The diagnostic study of choice is going to be a CTA. We're looking for a filling defect in the pulmonary arteries, as I showed you. And of course, the treatment is anticoagulation or an and or an IVC filter. So let's come back to the high yield question. This was a 41 year old female coming to the ED presenting with acute left leg pain, swelling and erythema, right? So on physical exam, she is in no distress. Her vitals are normal. She has had no past surgical history, but has a history of gout for which she takes NSAIDs. She takes oral contraceptives regularly. Her D dimer is elevated. What's the next best step in management? So we have a 41 year old coming with unilateral leg pain, swelling and erythema. So that those are the signs and symptoms of a DVT, right? Her D-dimer is also elevated. Another sign, another clue that this is maybe a DVT. Now, you know, just based on this clinical vignette, you know, this could also be lymphedema, cellulitis, but you know, the D-dimer is elevated. She's presenting with signs and symptoms of DVT. She also has a risk factor for a DVT. She's on oral contraceptives, right? So again, remember the hypercoagulability part of the she mnemonic, right? You know, the, the gout and the NSAIDs is just a distractor, right? But not, you often get that on the USMLE. Uh, so the obviously the next best step would be to get an ultrasound, right? Because you want to see and evaluate if she in fact has a DVT. It could be some other uh, diagnosis like cellulitis or lymphedema, right? You're looking for lack of compression of the vein to suggest a DVT. So the best answer here would of course be get an ultrasound of the left leg. She may require a CTA to chest to rule out a PE later if she has, you know, tachypnea or tachycardia or things like that. But the immediate best answer here is again, ultrasound to evaluate for a DVT. I hope that was helpful. Tune in next week for another super high yield USMLE domination tutorial. Thank you so much.